The 2014 CAC baseball season saw Salisbury win its third straight and 12th overall conference title with a 5-1 victory over Christopher Newport in Game 1 of the championship round. The Seagulls didn't stop there as they went on to capture the NCAA regional title to advance to the College World Series in Appleton, Wisconsin for the fourth time in program history. Who are the biggest threats to knock Salisbury off its perch atop the CAC this spring? Let's find out by taking an inside look at each of the 10 CAC teams as we count down the preseason coaches poll along the way. The goals that, that our team set is, you know, they really want to be competitive. They want to compete for championships. And you know, we found out last year we needed to step up and, and we needed to get a lot better. Um, CAC is fantastic and every team is good. And so this year the main goal that, that we wanted to do is qualify for the CAC tournament. Um, you know, that's where, where we need to start the building process is qualifying for the tournament and getting in, getting experience. Once we get some experience in the tournament, you know, then we can expect to compete for CAC championships. We've got a lot of, not a lot of returners, but some big ones that are coming back. Obviously, Colin Bigelow is going to be big on the mound for us. Uh, he was good last year, uh, one of the better arms in the CAC. Um, CJ up the middle. C.J. Andrews is solid. This is his fourth year starting at shortstop for us. We returned Giovanni Prado, uh, who was out last year with the labrum injury. Um, he's coming back. So up the middle, I feel like we're going to be as solid as any team defensively up the middle. Brings some experience, brings seniority to the to the team. Uh, we're still a little young, but but those three we're going to expect a lot out of. We brought in some, some pretty good talent. Uh, we brought in another pitcher named Bradley Jackson that we're pretty excited about that, that we feel can be a good compliment to Colin um, on Saturdays. Uh, we brought in a, a pretty good catcher from Dixie State, um, Madison Hildebrandt, that we're expecting to bring some some leadership and, and some experience in as well with a young team. Um, and then one of our young young outfielders, Luke Smith, uh, right now looks like he'll start in center field for us, and we're pretty excited about him, bring some, some speed to the outfield that we haven't had. Um, and you know, playing at, at a high school that competes regularly for state championships, he's used to being in big games and, and big situations. I mean, it's not going to change very much for us, uh, where we have so many ODAC and USA South schools that are around us that we've played for years and years and years. Um, it, it's not going to change very much from last year. So non-conference is really good. Um, you know, the ODAC schools are really competitive. Washington Lee, Roanoke. Um, Lynchburg College, they're all really good. So we don't ever get a break. They're all really good. And, and going into CAC again, there, there is no easy team. You better come to play if, if you want to win in the CAC. And and you can't have a down day. The biggest thing last year is learning how to finish. You know, we were competitive in a, in a lot of baseball games. Uh, you know, we had Salisbury. We played them really competitive, had a chance to win that game. Um, young mistakes cost us games go to Christopher Newport and play them really competitive there, had a chance to win, um, and we just didn't know how to finish. So a lot of what we're focused on is learning how to finish, and that comes with young teams. They just got to learn, hey, we can do it, and we can finish these baseball games. So that's one of the main focuses is, is we, we got to learn how to finish. Um, another thing that, that I think we're going to be a lot better on is we're not going to walk as many people. Um, on the mound. Our pitchers are going to be better. We're going to attack hitters better. Um, they're going to be more confident in their pitches. If we can cut down on the walks, we'll stop giving free bases away and, and help us to be more competitive in baseball games. And then with all the the people we've brought in, we feel defensively we're going to be 10 times better than we were last year. So we're really excited about who we brought in. We feel that um, the change won't be a long process as far as becoming very relevant in the CAC. I don't feel like it's going to be a long rebuilding process. Last year we rebuilt a little bit and, and I feel this year we'll be right in the middle of things.
goals here at Pensa Harrisburg Baseball uh, for this season, number one is to make playoffs. We feel that it doesn't matter for one, two, three, or six, uh, as long as we get into playoffs, uh, we have a chance to win, uh, win the championship. And that's uh, a new season once you make it into playoffs. So goal number one is to make, make conference tournament. Uh, we'd also, our, our other goal that we have in control of our hands right now is making ECAC playoffs and qualifying for that. Um, so making the national tournament is, is uh, obviously would be a goal down the road um, after we qualify for conference playoffs. But the two goals that we have most control of in our hands right now as well um, are making conference tournament and becoming ECAC uh, eligible. Uh, we've also had an expectation of, of reaching a 3.0 GPA as a group, as, as, a, as a team. Um, so that's also another goal and expectation that we have for the spring semester as well. Key losses from last year, we have two of them that graduated. Uh, Colton Houseel was uh, primarily an outfielder. DH um, was our, our program's all-time leading hitter, um, hits leader. Uh, so his bat in the lineup is, is definitely going to be missed. And we also had Travis Kramer, who was a transfer player uh, here for two years and um, played mainly second base. Um, was, was also you know another pretty important bat in our lineup the last two years and uh, so we'll miss both their their presence on the field uh, this year our key returners uh, we have a lot of our main pitchers back this year will cheney clint hicks and uh, derek slagle uh, led our team in innings pitched and um, had most of the wins that we had last year so those guys will all be back, which is, a, which is a huge benefit for us to have their leadership on the mound. Um, and we have a couple, position-wise, we have a, a couple sophomores uh, that, that we hope will be stepping up now that they have a full season of college baseball and the CAC under their belt. We have some, some very important key, key new guys, a lot of them. Uh, when you have a season the way, <laughs> way we had last year, um, it's almost like starting over square one a little bit. And we did a lot of, uh, a lot of recruiting. Uh, we brought in a lot of new players. Um, so, so you'll see a lot of new guys all over the field. And we had a very competitive fall. Um, we told everybody, including returners, that you know, our, our approach was every position is up for grabs. And we had a very competitive fall, put, put the players in competitive situations every single day um, while we worked out and practiced and had inter-squad games. So you're going to see a lot of new guys, and uh, if they step up, uh, I think we're, we're going to reach our goals and have a really good season. Thoughts on our schedule? We've, we've continued to uh, boost our, our, our strength of schedule non-league. Uh, we want to go down and, and play as many southern teams as we can um, in region games. We're going to continue to do that next year as well. Um, so we're adding Bridgewater. Uh, this year and next year um, along with some other teams but but our strength of schedule is, is is very strong obviously with us moving to the CAC last year kind of gave us a, a taste of what where we have to be and and we're we're going to take steps to, to continue to build and reach our goals this year but um, our strength of schedule is definitely going to help our team improve this year and um, like I said we look to to qualify for, for playoffs and ECACs as well. Similar to last year, we want to go out and compete every day, which I think we did, and I think we got a lot better by the end of last year, and we want to, we want to get better every day. You know, that's the goal. Um, in addition to that, 
clearly last year we you know we didn't throw enough strikes and we didn't really field the baseball very well. And um, if we can do that a little bit better this year, I feel like we'll we'll have a chance to fare a little better um, with our results. But we definitely need to take care of the baseball a little better this year. Um, you know, we, we brought back the core um, of our team from last year. Of course, it's year two, and, and we've got some sophomores this year. Um, but we feel like it's pretty strong um, in terms of where, you know, in, in a year two of a program's development. It's all about developing the program, and the entire roster is important. We feel like we've got a little more depth this year on the mound. We've got a little more depth in the middle infield this year. So um, we feel pretty good about some things. Um, definitely have some guys that played real well for us as freshmen last year, and those guys are, are mainly back this year. And we had a really strong fall, and some newcomers stepped in and showed uh, showed some real promise so it's all going to depend on how quickly we can kind of pull it together um, heading into the spring season this year but we feel pretty confident that we've got some good players um, that can certainly play the game we just got to go out there and get some good early experience and try to put some things together a little bit quick more quickly this year yeah i mean number one i mean the cac is is a very strong baseball league um, you know until they get knocked off the perch at the top i think salisbury and christopher newport are going to kind of be the, the class of the league. Um, but beyond that, you know, last year York won the regular season title, but very strong. And Frostburg State had a great year and had a lot of really good players returning. Even the teams sort of in the so-called middle of the pack teams with your St. Mary's and your Wesley's, um, they were very good. They were very difficult opponents for us. Mary Washington had a little bit of a hiccup last year. I expect they're going to be really strong this year and, and maybe one of the teams vying for the, you know, the regular season championship. And then even you know, Southern Virginia and, and Penn State Harrisburg, they challenged us all the way through last year. So from our standpoint, everybody in our league is really good. And um, also from the non-conference standpoint, last year we played a, a schedule that was ranked in the top third of the country. And so we expect that the schedule we've put together again this year is another one where we're not trying to duck anybody. We're trying to play the best teams that we can to try to help our program grow. And uh, we feel like we've assembled one again this year and we're ready to take it on. First of all, we would like to, uh, one of the goals is to qualify for the CAC tournament, which they only take six teams out of the ten. And uh, I also have a goal, I want every one of them to pass their courses, and I want them to enjoy the game and respect the game. We had four starters that uh, we lost that will hurt us. Uh, uh, Sam Beatty was an outstanding pitcher, did a great job last year. Um, Alex uh, Lenovich was a very good hitter and a good first baseman. And we lost two outfielders, and uh, Kenny Byer and Brandon Eady both had good foot speed and uh, hit the ball well. And Sam Coe is a pretty good uh, relief pitcher, and he also started some games. A very, very big loss. Catching is Connor Goody, pitching is Mike O'Neill, mm -hmm. and in the infield is Jared Eaker, Luke Green, and Zach Rowe. And in the outfield is Brad Diaguado and Paul Romer. We really only have one that's going to be a starter, and that is Hunter Moeller who is a transfer from the College of Southern Berlin. He will start the season at shortstop. He has the ability to play a number of places. It's more experience that they will gain. Uh, they get better as they come along. Uh, without the non-conference and spring trip, it, it would be hard to be successful against our conference opponents.
you know, our primary goal this year is to, to qualify for the CAC championship. Um, take our best shot when we get there. I think our league's very competitive. I think any team has a shot um, to make it to the to championship and, and to win it. Uh, so that's our primary goal is to get to the championship tournament and, and uh, do our best when we get there. We return a lot of guys this year. Um, eight of the nine starters uh, are back. Um, Trevor Mears uh, is uh, second team all conference last year. Uh, so he's back uh, to, to kind of lead our offense. Uh, but we got a lot of great returners. Uh, our middle is very solid. Um, you know, with, with seniors, uh, a lot of experience up the middle of our field, catching center field, um, shortstop second base. So um, we have a lot of guys that, that have quite a bit of experience and, and a couple young guys that are hungry to, to get in there and make an impact. In terms of the pitching side, we're a little thin. Uh, we lost two all-conference guys uh, with Zach Stewart and uh, Andrew Cooper last year, uh, guys I felt very comfortable giving the ball to uh, at any point, and uh, losing them is going to be have a big impact on us. Um, but we're very deep. Uh, on the mound this year, we're also very young, so uh, we need to find uh, a, a way to get these uh, young guys some experience early in the year and then get them ready to, to pitch toward the end of the season. Eric Willie will be coming back for his third year. Uh, he's got quite a bit of experience. I think he's ready to, to take another step. Uh, Rob Mills uh, will probably be our uh, most trusted guy out of the bullpen. He's got the most experience along with uh, with Brad Walker. Uh, those, those two guys uh, um, will lead our bullpen. We have a junior college transfer, Keandre Jones, uh, came goes from Dell Tech. Um, I think he's going to be an impact guy uh, somewhere in the middle of the order, possibly an outfielder. Uh, Connor Bowers uh, is going to be a, a guy who I think is going to contribute right away uh, to the program. And then we got a couple of the younger guys that are uh, you know, ready to take a spot. We, we got a group of young pitchers that uh, are really talented. Uh, Sam Meck, uh, Cody Simmett, Matt Horton um, are three guys that I think are going to compete for a starting role. Uh, with a, a host of other young guys, uh, a couple of transfers that I think are are primed and ready to make a make a run. Uh, we have some good teams uh, before we start before we start conference play. Uh, Widener uh, was a team that went, uh, I believe, to the tournament last year. Uh, SUNY Oswego uh, was a team that was competing for their their championship. Um, Cortland State, uh, F and M. We have some good. Good teams on our schedule uh, that'll help us prepare to get ready for the uh, the conference slate starting in early March. Capital Athletic Conference has done a great job with uh, with baseball, and uh, you know, adding the three teams, uh, four teams last year. Um, I, I think the depth of our conference rivals any in the league or any in the land. Really, um, we do a, a great job top to bottom. Um, like I said at the beginning, I think any team can compete to win this conference, and it's going to be a dogfight every, every conference game. Well, I think our, our first goal and probably our most important goal is uh, we have to get back to being competitive. And I know that sounds uh, cliche-ish, but uh, it's really true. In 2014, we were not uh, for various reasons, and hopefully we've addressed those you know, in the off season and with some of our workouts and recruiting. But the uh, number one thing, we've got to get back uh, to being competitive uh, in practice, competitive people, com competitive in uh, competitions and uh, you know uh, we, we think that's our biggest challenge right now. Key returners uh, you know James Sink, uh, Jonathan Haught, James Keller, uh, Bernie Mayflower has battled some injuries and looks like he's back to true form and that's going to be important. Um, Brian Burns uh, in, the, in the outfield is a key returner uh, came in and did a nice job for us last year 
and uh, Thomas Weaver. Those are all key guys, and for us to be successful, those guys have to be better. Uh, they have to be uh, more mature. They have to be more mentally responsible for their performance. And uh, early indications through the fall and uh, through our workouts, uh, you know, I'm very uh, uh, encouraged by, by their progress. Uh, newcomers, we have an influx of some new guys and uh, some guys that uh, will be key for us this year. Um, Ryan Van Ash uh, is going to be key for us on the mound. Uh, Kyle Bynum uh, as an outfielder. Uh, Justin Keim as an infielder shortstop is hopefully going to give us some stability. Mitch Monahan, uh, you know, a transfer student, uh, hopefully both on the mound and in the outfield uh, is important for us. Uh, David Slupek, uh, a freshman, uh, hopefully he's going to be able to uh, uh, be as advertised and do some things. And, uh, and Joe Thompson, uh, another pitcher for us. Uh, hopefully those guys uh, can come in and, and, and be as advertised what we need them to be and, and be solid and contribute. And, uh, you know, that should help us a great deal. Well, our schedule is always tough. Uh, it, it makes it nice when you sit one mile off, 19, or off Interstate 95 and people want to stop in and, and play you. Uh, I know that we have on our schedule the preseason ranked 24th, 20th, and number six team in the country on the, ske on the schedule. I know that we have three other teams coming into play us that were interregional last year. I know we have two additional teams coming into play us that uh, were either interregional, won a conference championship, or in the preseason rankings receiving votes. They're good clubs. So it will be a very challenging schedule. Uh, obviously, when you play in the CAC, it's a very competitive uh, baseball league. Uh, I think that's been proven over many years. And uh, we look forward to the challenges that this league brings us. Every time you start a new year, at least over the last several years, our goals have never changed. I mean, it's ultimately to win a conference championship. I think that if you're not shooting for the top level to get to the NCAA regionals, um, at the end of the day, you're probably selling your kids short um, and the program short. And I know that that's the, the goals for most of the programs in the league. Um, and I know that there's a standard of excellence for this conference in baseball. So um, it's never changed. Um, I hope it will never change. I hope we're always to the point where we feel like we can compete at the highest level uh, for a conference championship and the opportunity to move on to play in the postseason. We had a really good group of seniors that left this past year. Um, Kevin Keene, Dylan Shoup, Mike Verbickus um, were some of the position players that we lost. Uh, Rob Jennings was awesome for us as well. Um, Kenny Georges, Austin Peretz on the mound. Um, several all-conference players over the last couple of years, uh, one All-American in there and a player, of the, you know, CAC Player of the Year. So and when you lose a group that really brought a high level of consistency over the last two years really um, in 13 and 14 and, and I think helped kind of take us to the next level if you look at our record um, some of the statistics over the last two years those guys did an unbelievable job all those seniors they all played a, a huge role in what we did um, you know and they'll be greatly missed the first guy that I think of is always the guy that you look to kind of be your leader on defense and that's your shortstop and that's Cam Stewart for us this year uh, did a really nice job last year uh, in his first year in the program and um, really went out and had a lot of success this past summer in the Coastal Plain League, uh, which is a highly prestigious summer league. And I look you know, for him to take you know, two or three steps forward after his success and really that experience, um, not so much physically, but how he leads, how he goes about his business, and how he can kind of mentor some of the other, the other players. Um, Ricky Castro, uh, Zach Weiss, both those guys had a huge impact offensively. Uh, one play second, one place third, and then Ricky Brady, who was our you know team MVP last year, who played first base. He'll be back as well. Um, those four guys are, are really the guys that, that we're going to look to. You know, they'll probably hit <laughs> maybe one, two, three, four in our order, um, and they're going to be relied upon a lot um, for leadership. 
um, for that experience. We start with Bennett Schiltz and the Clayton Frymuth and Greg Schneider, those three guys, um, you know, coming into the season, they look like they could be our top three guys in the rotation. Uh, really excited about their prospects for the season. Bennett is a guy that's dealt with a little bit of an elbow uh, issue, so we'll see how he comes along here. He seems to be progressing nicely with the therapy and the rehab. Um, he threw very well in the fall, uh, had an outstanding summer, so we, we're excited about what he can do and feel comfortable with what he can do. Clayton's a left-handed pitcher, um, just had an outstanding fall for us. You really started to see him take the next step um, moving forward, uh, even though those two guys were new, where Clayton came from, he didn't get a lot of opportunity previously. So excited about what he brings to the table. Big, strong guy, should be able to throw a lot of innings for us. Uh, and Greg Schneider uh, is the third guy, but he's definitely not the least guy. He's a tremendous athlete, probably going to be a two-way guy for us with DH and play some outfield along with pitch. Um, at the end of the season, I expect him to be one of the top players in the league. Um, he, he, he's a guy that can run, he can throw, he can, he can do it all. And the fourth guy that I want to mention is a guy that's going to take over for Kevin Keene in center field, and that's Nick Walker. Um, he's new to the program. He had an outstanding fall, really did a great job defensively, and that was what Kevin did so well. Um, so now we'll see if he can be a guy that can replace Kevin you know, in the lineup, and that'll be a little bit more difficult task. But those four guys uh, we're very excited about, along with some younger guys. Um, on the, on the pitching staff um, and some younger position players that we have come in. So hopefully the future will remain bright for the program and um, you know those four guys will have a major impact on the program along with some other guys as well. It's always been very important to me to make sure we put the most competitive schedule together that we can. Um, so at the end of the day, if you aren't the one that gets the automatic bid, you have an opportunity to, to still move on and play in the postseason. Our conference strength of schedule is so tough um, just by playing the in-league games. Um, you know, it can boost your strength of schedule just with teams, York, Salisbury, CNU now. Um, those, those schools have, have been perennially really good teams in and out of regionals over the last five or six years. Um, you know, so just the opportunity to play them on a regular basis boosts your strength of schedule. Um, and then you throw in every year now Marietta, uh, Shenandoah. We also play Randolph-Macon, who's been in the regional, I think, two of the last three years and been a ODAC uh, power. Just having some of those schools that, that are in the USA South, that are in the ODAC, um, Washington Jefferson's another one, La Roche is another one. Um, the schools that are in the area that are just strengthen that non-conference uh, schedule that help you get that those points that you need um, to possibly get that at large. We hope that we'll be there in the end and we certainly try to prepare ourselves with the schedule that we play, um, the places that we go, the things that we do in order to you know, make sure that we have the best opportunity that we can you know, to receive that or earn that automatic bid at the end of the year. Our goals and expectations for this year are to uh, win the conference, um, to improve every single day, and uh, to make it to the NCAA tournament. We've been uh, out of the NCAA tournament the last couple years, and, and we feel like this is a team that can get back there. Four key losses. Uh, number one, we lose our catcher, Colby Herr. He was a really special player. He was an All-American at a very pivotal position, batted third. He's big. He's going to be very, very difficult to replace. Uh, center fielder was Andrew Hershey, batted in the leadoff spot, uh, was also an outstanding player all-conference. And uh, Colin Porter, okay, he was another uh, very solid shortstop for us, a productive middle-of-the-order bat, uh, always worked quality at bats. And then in the starting rotation, uh, Dave Walker was a really good pitcher for us, um, won some games really really pitched well early in the season and uh, he'll be difficult to replace also. Well, we've got a good portion of our lineup back. Um, we've got uh, Brad Wenzel in the two hole. He's coming back. He was an all-region first baseman outfielder last year. Uh, Derek Pitzer in the cleanup spot was also an all-region player. He split his time between designated hitter and first base. Uh, Steve Mealy in right field. Uh, Sean Mulholland returns from injury. He played. He was going to play left field for us last year. Uh, then he injured his shoulder, so he wasn't able to contribute defensively. So he was basically reduced because of the injury to just a pinch hitter. But he's a guy that we feel really good about. Um, 
and then we've got uh, a number of guys that were freshmen last year that had an opportunity to play, uh, Scott Steffi, uh, Mike Moore uh, on the infield, and uh, Logan Countryman in the outfield, they'll be returning, and they got their, their first opportunity to, uh, to play college baseball last year, and they all were valuable contributors. And then in the infield, one of our, our, our unsung heroes last year was J.J. Olinius, really good second baseman, uh, top-notch defender, and out of the nine hole, hit 280 with 20 RBI. So that was a very productive uh, bottom of the order. And uh, he's a very aggressive base runner and one of the emotional leaders of the team. We have, you know, three solid freshman arms, um, all right-handed pitchers that have uh, better than average fastballs and the makings of pretty good secondary stuff. Um, and we've got, we've got four young catchers. And, you know, a couple of those guys are going to have to take uh, the majority of the playing time. Um, to replace Colby Hurst, so we're talking about uh, guys that all can do some things well, but all also have some areas they need to improve upon uh, in order to be the guy that gets the majority of the innings. So uh, we'll see how that competition uh, plays itself out. Our conference is always one of the top conferences in the entire country, uh, and then our non-conference schedule is just loaded with uh, regionally ranked teams. We'll play a number of the uh, uh, and Jack teams as well as some of the best teams throughout Pennsylvania and then we have some teams from the ODAC uh, that we've been playing for years and it's it's very very challenging um, and that's the way we like it. I think our strengths this year will definitely be pitching and defense. Um, we've got uh, three quarters of our rotation back. Uh, Dan Gerganis was all conference, Elliot Mortimer was all conference and Randy Frankenfield was a guy that as a freshman his record's a little deceiving because there were a number of games he got no decisions in uh, that we had the lead late in games um, but he got a ton of experience last year as a freshman so we feel pretty strong with those three starting at the top of the rotation and we've got a veteran crew coming back to man the bullpen uh, so I think that would be the strength of our team along with our defense uh, we return everybody in the infield except for Colin Porter um, so I think just being fundamentally sound, uh, knowing what to do with the baseball when it's hit to you, and working together, the experience of playing as a team, okay, uh, I think will be uh, to our benefit. Well, our goals and expectation are the same every year. We want to compete, obviously, in the conference and put ourselves in a situation to be able to play in the NCAA tournament every year and take that as far as we can. A couple key losses that we had last year, obviously, uh, Player of the Year, Billy Steele, who had started shortstop for us for four years, uh, who was an All-American last year. Brian Beerline, Nick Santalucci, who were all-conference performer pitchers, and Justin Weaver as well. So we did lose quite a few uh, veterans from last year um, that we would definitely miss. Uh, some of our key returners this year, uh, obviously one is Austin Kilborn, who will be playing first base and doing some pitching for us. Uh, Kyle Corwin, who we played third base his first two years, we moved him over to shortstop. And uh, A.J. Nicely, who started uh, over half the games last year as a freshman. So those three right now we're really uh, depending on to, to help these new young guys uh, through the system. Um, and as well as Adam Emerson, who sat out last year with an injury, and he's back this year. Key newcomers this year, we have quite a few, actually. Um, we have uh, freshman Brandon Walker, who will probably be doing the catching for us. Um, Brandon Ginch, who is a transfer from the University of Richmond. Um, Josh Moore, who, um, and Joe Burris, who are both from Virginia Tech, transferred in. And um, Keith Roberts and Blake Ream uh, are also nice additions that are, um, are looking to probably make an immediate impact right away. Uh, as well as Travis Myers. We always try to schedule as tough as we can so we can prepare ourselves for the NCAA tournament. And by doing that, we bring in the regional powers that traditionally make it to the regional tournament, as well as some of the national powers that have been to the World Series quite a few times. So 
if we are fortunate enough to get to that point, it won't be a shock for our guys that we've been in that situation and we know what to expect. So we always try to gauge our schedule to prepare us for the next level. Well, I think uh, Coach Sires and Coach uh, Fleetwood have set unprecedented numbers here. Regionals, 15 straight, World Series. I think the goal here every year is to get back to the World Series. Um, they haven't had the success once they've gotten there. Hopefully this year we can, we can get past that and uh, win the whole thing. Well, we lost the right side of the infield and the outfield. Uh, Johnny Chiotis, uh, Ken O'Neill, Quinn Griffith, and Billy Root. Um, big players in last year's offense. Um, I think we have some guys that we've brought in and some backup players to them last year, uh, such as Alex Lippman, who are going to step up and, and fill the void lost. Well, we got a bunch because we're very senior-led. Uh, the entire pitching staff is back, so that's a plus. Um, we've added a couple guys coming in uh, around the infield. You have Bobby Sanzone, Pete Grasso, uh, Austin Barefoot, Kyle Heyman out in center field, who's an All-American. Uh, so we, we have a, a bunch of seniors coming back this year to, to lead the way. Well, we have a pitcher from right here in the area, Kyle Skilling, who uh, right-hander. We're going to use him in relief to start the season. Um, I think him added to the mix with some other guys that might have not got a lot of time, like a John Britton uh, from last year who was, I was impressed with this fall. Um, those guys adding to the mix will, will definitely help. I think it's tough. I think early in the year uh, we play some tough teams, Virginia Wesleyan, the Cortlands, um, the Catholics. Um, you know, and then you get to the end of the year and you play Hopkins and Montclair. There's some tough ball games right there. So, and then you add that to the mix with CNU, York, and Mary Wash, who are always tough in conference. Uh, it makes for a pretty tough schedule. You know, the challenge is getting to know, getting to know the guys was the big thing that I took all fall. I, I used it. I took a step back and just wanted to develop a relationship with them. Um, now we move into the spring. I'm going to be a little bit more demanding of them. Uh, but, but it's been great. Coach, like I said, Coach Fleetwood and Coach Sire sent, uh, had some great numbers here. They've done a lot of great things. Um, one thing they they haven't done is win the whole thing. Um, hopefully we have the parts in, in place that, that we might be able to make a run at it this year.